In this video, I'm going to tell you my secrets that I use to get to 10,000 subscribers. I have to be honest with you and tell you that it took me a lot longer to get to 10,000 subscribers than I had planned. The Google algorithm has been taking over. It's gotten a lot harder on YouTube in the last couple of years than it ever has been to get viewers to see your videos. And believe me, I can tell you I've tried every method that's out there. The good news is what I've been noticing lately is that it's actually starting to get to the point where now the algorithm works to our advantage. And I'm going to show you what I did to grow my channel so that you can get yours going quickly. When I first started uploading invention therapy videos, my initial plan was to do 10 videos. In the beginning I thought, oh, I'll just pay for some views. So I spent a couple of grand and got nowhere. So that's my first recommendation. Do not pay per views. It won't make a difference. It won't help. Sure, you'll get some views in the beginning, but it's really questionable where they're coming from, number one, and it won't help you grow your channel. The second thing I did which I'm really not proud of, is that I started to buy some subscribers. And that didn't turn out well either. So I don't recommend doing that. Don't spend any money on buying subscribers. It'll only hurt your channel. Once I came to the conclusion that there's no way you can buy your way into views, I decided to take a different approach. And my next 10 to 20 videos were done differently. They were done more like this one, which has even changed over the last two years, the style that I use to produce my videos. But basically the format was sort of like this. And it seemed to really interest the viewers and keep them coming back for more. I know you've heard it from all the other channels, but it's true. You do have to produce good content that people are going to want to watch. So while I was uploading that next set of videos, I did something different and I started to make sure that the titles, the tags and the descriptions were relevant to what people were searching for. And just like those experts claim, it did help. But I also noticed a few things that you could keep in mind too. Tags really didn't seem to make a difference and either did the description. It was really just the title that was important for your keywords. And that brings up another point. You should start experimenting with different things because what worked for me may not work for you. Which brings me to a new point about some of the experts that are out there. And that is that they've been uploading videos for a long time to YouTube. Some of them have a few thousand videos uploaded. I can tell you if I just uploaded a bunch of videos to YouTube right now, thousands of them, if I had the time to do all those videos, that I would get the same amount of views and subscribers that they do. They've been doing this for something like 10 years and they're still only up to about a half a million subscribers. Well, half a million subscribers may seem like a lot, but if you've uploaded thousands of videos with good quality content, you also have that number of subscribers. So that long tail steady approach is a good way to do it, if that's what you want to do. Something interesting and unexpected happened to my channel. If you like what you've been seeing and hearing in this video, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, give me a thumbs up, and a bunch of comments down below. There was one five minute video, well it was actually nine minutes, but there was one nine minute video that I made about SolidWorks. It's a program that we use as inventors to design objects, you know, things like um, plastic injection molds, metal parts, things like that. And SolidWorks is a program that I've been using as an inventor for years now, and I thought that the inventors out there would really like to learn how to use that program. It's a very important part of being an inventor, so you may want to check those videos out too. But suddenly I noticed a lot of traffic starting to come to the channel. And when I looked at the stats, it was that video that started to attract attention. What had happened is when I posted it, it was at the bottom of the results for the searches. But as people were watching it, it started to rise up and it became number one on the search for Learn SolidWorks. That single video is the one that started to really drive viewers to my channel and set me on this whole different direction with invention therapy. 
what we've learned from this lesson is that you need to make sure that you just consistently post a bunch of videos. You're really not going to get anywhere unless you do about 25 videos and experiment with different things. The styles of the videos, the keywords that you use, and what types of videos you're doing, you know, the subject matter and things like that in the videos. So that's my first real advice to you. So this SolidWorks video started growing. And I remembered something that Daryl Eves had said. He said that when you have a video that starts to become popular, it's important that you do a follow-up video to it. And I thought about that for a minute, and I had a different take on it. So this one video was getting about five, six, seven hundred views a day, which wasn't a lot, but pretty still significant for, you know, my channel that was just starting out. So I had an idea. And what I did was, I produced nine more videos as follow-ups to that one main video. And then at the end of the first video, which was titled Learn SolidWorks in Five Minutes, I changed it just at the end of the title to part one. And then obviously the next nine, I said part two, part three, part four, and so on and so on. But at the end of the first video, I linked to the second video thinking, well, maybe the viewers, or YouTube at least, will understand that this is part one of a series, obviously. And that's exactly what happened. So now what I did is I had a video that had almost a thousand views a day from the beginning that was bleeding at the end a portion of those viewers to the second video. And then I did the same thing with the second video at the end of that one I put a link to the next video, part three. And then I was bleeding a percentage of those viewers to the next video and so on and so on. And guess what happened? As the first video started to grow, as it moved up the ranks in search terms, so did the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth video. And that's basically my first trick. So. There's all you need to do to start growing your channel. It's quite easy, actually, if you think about it. Put a bunch of videos up there, about 25, on different subject matters with different keywords and descriptions and tags, and then wait and see which ones of those 25, if not more than one, start becoming popular, and then start creating series around each of those popular videos so that you sort of fan out to all these different viewers. But there were a bunch of other tricks I did along the way as well. If YouTube wasn't gonna promote my video and I wasn't gonna pay to promote my video, I had to come up with a way to get people to watch my videos. So I put a couple of my product videos on my websites that sell my products. And what that did is the traffic from my websites also gave me views back to YouTube. But there's a problem with that. Views that come from external embeds really don't count all that much to YouTube anymore. They had a problem in the beginning when they first started where it was pretty easy to game the system where you just refresh the page for a video and you clicked up your views really quickly. Well, that doesn't work anymore. What YouTube really wants you to do is bring viewers onto the YouTube platform. So that was a trick that I started to use in the beginning as well. It's a, it's a method that I've used for quite a long time now, and now I'm ready to share it with you. There's a video here on YouTube that I just did talking about Quora, but I can tell you that for a while, five to 10% of my views were coming from Quora and coming onto the YouTube platform. So I was driving viewers that weren't on YouTube back to YouTube to watch my videos. Other people have done Reddit and a few other big blogs, so you may wanna look for videos on YouTube for that. Reddit didn't really work out well for me. I don't like to sit there and answer those types of questions. And that's about it for this video. 